click the bell icon to turn on notifications. So how do you normally filter data in Excel? You use the filter dropdowns, right? Yes, they're fast and convenient, but they do have a couple of significant drawbacks. First of all, they don't update automatically when your data changes, meaning that if you update your data, you would need to reapply the filter. And secondly, you are limited to seeing the results of the filter where your filter has been applied in your worksheet. Fortunately, the recent introduction of the filter function in Excel 365 solves both of these issues. The filter function can be used in any cell in the worksheet and the results update automatically. Part of the dynamic array group of functions, the result is an array of values that spills into a range of cells. So with all that said, let's take a look at how it works. So let's start out by taking a look at the data that we're going to be filtering. You can see here I have a list of essentially exam results. I have the testing center in column A, the student name in column B, the date that they sat the exam in column C, the exam they sat and then the results, so whether they passed or failed. And then next to that I have a little table which is going to tell me the names of the students who need to retake the exam. And I want to be able to filter this information by testing center. Now, in order to achieve all of this, we're going to use the new filter function in Excel. But prior to constructing our filter formula, there's a couple of things I'm going to do first to make my life a little bit easier, which will also show you a couple of other really useful techniques in Excel. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my data into a table. So let's click in the table, press Control T, make sure that we have my table has headers selected and click on OK. And remember, if you want to, you can change the style of that table if this one isn't sufficient. And I'm going to change mine to an orange table style, light 10. And I'm also going to name my table. So let's call this exam underscore results and hit enter. Now, one thing you'll notice here with the testing centers is that we have four or five and they essentially repeat throughout this column. And what I want to do is basically have a drop down list in cell I4, which allows me to select the testing center and then produce the results. Now I can do this by setting up a data validation drop down list. But let me show you what happens if I just do this as my data is laid out now. So let's jump up to data, into data tools, and select data validation. I'm going to create a drop down list and my source is basically going to be my testing centers. Control shift down to select them all and click on OK. So now I have my drop down arrow, but if you take a look, when I click it, you can see that I have the testing centers repeated. It's basically just picked up whatever I have in column A or in that range that I selected. And technically what I want here is I just want a unique list of the testing centers. So I'm going to undo a couple of times to get rid of that data validation. And we're going to use another new function in Excel called the unique function. And the unique function is pretty much what it says on the tin. It's going to very quickly and very easily give you a list of unique values. Now I'm going to type this in just somewhere over here on my spreadsheet. So we're going to say equals unique open bracket. I now just need to select the array, which is my testing centers. And if you take a look up in the formula bar right now, I'm going to close off my bracket. That is all I need. Hit enter. And now I have a list of those unique testing centers. And the cool thing about using unique, which is similar to filter in that it is part of the new dynamic array collection. If anything updates in my data, this unique list is automatically going to update. So for example, if I was to add in a row down here and list something like Birkbeck, look at the unique list. It's automatically added that new entry. Now I don't want that. I'm just going to undo, but just remember it does dynamically update. So now I'm going to do my data validation again, but this time I'm going to use my unique list. So my source is going to be this and click on OK. And now you'll see that in the drop down, I just have those unique entries. 
what I might want to do here is just right click and hide that column to take it out of view. So let's select something from this list. I'm going to start with Halifax and I'm now ready to construct my filter formula to filter my results. So we're going to type in equals filter open bracket. Take a look at the arguments we have. We only have three. The first thing we need to establish is our filter array. So essentially, what information do we want to pull back from the table? Well, I want to pull back the student name, the date, the exam and the result. So I'm going to select all of those columns. And remember, because my data is in a table, I'm getting that table referencing as opposed to cell references. Comma. Now I need to tell Excel what I want to include in my filter. So what am I filtering on? Well, I'm essentially filtering on two pieces of criteria here. I want to filter by testing center. And I also want to filter for just the students who need to retake the exam. So just the students who have a result of fail. Now, because I have two pieces of criteria, each piece of criteria needs to go in brackets or parentheses. So let's open bracket. The first thing I want to include is the result. So the result needs to equal fail. And I put that in quote marks. Close my bracket. That's my first piece of criteria. Now you need to separate your criteria with an asterisk. And my second piece of criteria is the testing center. So I'm going to select the testing center column and that always needs to equal whatever I have in cell I4 and close my bracket. So now I have all of my criteria. Press comma. I now need to tell Excel what I want to return if it doesn't find any results. So if nothing matches both of those pieces of criteria, what do I want it to say in the table? Now you could just leave this blank by typing in two quote marks, but I'm just going to say no records, close quotes and close off my final bracket. Let's hit enter and see what we get. And there we go. So now it's just showing me all of the students for the testing center Halifax who have failed and need to retake the exam. Let's check this works. I'm going to click the drop down and change it to Little Rock. I now get a different list. Let's take a look at South Beds. There's just one person there. And let's take a look at Fairfields. Fairfields has no record. So everybody who went to the Fairfields testing center passed their exam. So I don't know about you, but I think that's really cool. It offers so much flexibility and the results are dynamic. So everything will update and change accordingly. I hope you enjoyed that. That's it for this lesson. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.